a nice lined up approach to land on a day with headwinds blowing right down the center of the runway. The aircraft is directly above the center line and the nose is pointed parallel with it. Back elevator pressure is applied to hold the nose up and bleed off airspeed just above the ground as the main wheels touch down and the aircraft makes a nice landing. It seems so simple, if only they could all look this good. Like a perfect Italian dish, there don't seem to be many ingredients in this recipe. So how does it go so wrong for us so often? Let's review some basics of how the airplane behaves, which you probably remember from early on in training. The aircraft is controlled along its three axes by the control stick or yoke, which controls pitch and bank, and the rudder pedals, which control yaw. We pitch up by bringing back elevator pressure on the yoke. In our single engine airplane, remember that the forces of P-factor, torque, and slipstream, especially present at low airspeeds and high angle of attack, will cause the aircraft to also nose to the left as it pitches up. This is countered by using your right foot on the rudder to bring the nose back in line with your direction of flight. Early on in training, you learn to coordinate your flight controls. So here we've coordinated the back pressure on the stick and the right rudder. Similarly, if we're to relieve that back pressure and let the nose down, we should also relieve the right foot pressure so the nose stays pointed where we want it to. Besides that, we also learn about adverse yaw. We turn the aircraft by banking it. Moving the control right moves the aileron such that there's less lift on the right wing so it drops and more lift on the left wing so it rises. With this increase in lift on the left side, we also have to accept an increase in drag on that side, causing the aircraft to yaw to the left, the opposite direction we're banking. This is adverse yaw, and it's also countered by right foot pressure. Once again, we're coordinating the use of right aileron and the yoke with right foot pressure on the pedal. To roll out of the turn, we're once again coordinated by relieving pressure on the yoke while relieving right foot pressure. So how do we apply these basics in a landing? Well, at the point that we begin our so-called round out where we want to bleed off airspeed by bringing the nose up just above the ground, we again do so by applying back pressure to the yoke. Left uncoordinated, this nose up will also induce a left turning tendency, causing us to yaw off to the side of the center line. When we're learning to land, we can often observe this happening, and as we see ourselves getting left at the center line, react to this by trying to roll the aircraft to the right. Let's think about the result of moving the yoke to the right, given what we already know about coordination. We'll bank the wings right, but adverse yaw will cause the nose to swing further to the left, not what we want. So what we find is that as with any phase of flight, we need to coordinate the controls in landing. That means that as we bring the nose up, we need to apply more right foot. With the wind right down the runway, we really don't need to bank the wings to maintain the center line. Think of this as just like taxiing in the air. We're holding that center line by moving our feet, not by steering the yoke left and right. Here's the rub. As we bleed off airspeed and hold the nose up more and more, that left turning tendency gets stronger, and so we need to add even more right foot to keep the airplane pointed straight. As we get slower and the nose gets higher, that right foot pressure needs to get larger. We're still coordinating our flight controls, pulling back more on the control while using more and more right foot pressure. You shouldn't change one thing in the airplane without coordinating it with some other control input like this. This is the reason you have to endure that dreaded more right rudder chance from your instructor, even on a perfectly calm wind day or one where the wind is right down the runway. If you can work on the principle of staying coordinated on these landings, it'll make your transition to crosswind landings, which we'll be talking about soon, that much smoother.